Howdy lovelies, how are you all doing today? Well, welcome back to our crafting, where we learn, grow and craft together. Today we're going to look at making ephemera holders, which can also be a document holder, and then just a few quick ways of making tuck spots. Those are really, really easy. And as you know by now, I am focused on the beginner. So I try to make everything as easy as possible as we ease into the process of journaling, junk journaling. And as time goes on with the other series, we will delve deeper into what type of journals they are, what's the purpose of each and so forth. So with further ado, let's get started. Ephemera holders are basically an accordion type like file or concertinas for those others. Um, in session six, I think it was, we made a matchbox and I had shown you this one briefly, which is attached with the Velcro dot. And I showed you the little pocket on top um, that you can add stuff in on there. And then we open it up and you can see the little envelopes in there. Now, <laughs> there are um, eight envelopes on this one and I had attached it on the side completely and it literally folds open like a fan. I'll turn it on its side. Mostly, accordions are just glued down in the middle. Sometimes in a T-shape. Upside down T, that is. So today we're going to make some of these with different types of envelopes. And if you don't have any ready-made envelopes, I will show you a way of how to make it with paper. Now, this one I've made when we um, started with the master boards. I think I've showed you this one. I had used a circle clasp, not a clasp, but a closure, which was just punched from, from packaging material, put an eyelet through and I tied the rope around or the string. This was a master board that I made um, using that to decorate my folder. The flap, however, this side, you can see, was also an envelope. The outside, also an envelope. And I had glued down the inside of that. I closed it up completely and I sliced it open so you can see put in glue so that it was more sturdy and then with the added texture on top and the paper on top it really is quite sturdy and I used the envelope's own flap because there's two layers of paper on there it's sturdy enough to hold the eyelet for the closure and the string and here I've added quite a number of envelopes in fact I had just used um, six envelopes sorry three envelopes that I had cut down in half and then made it a bit smaller so it's both sides you can't see it maybe if i turn it over not really you can't really see but the sides of it so the one side is here you can see the closure that side so i literally just sliced it in half and that is my one ephemera holder with some of my vintage stuff in it more the shabby chic things are kept in here you can adjust this and make it bigger. In that case, you will use, I think it's B4, A4, um, letter, pocket. I don't know what, what sizes you have. But for me, it will be like an I4 size envelope or bigger to use as a document folder. So let's get started. I'm going to use for the first one some small coin envel um, envelopes here. I'll just measure this for you in inches. It is three inches wide. And this is four inches long we're going to cut off the flap so i'll show you that and how to punch in the hole so just line this up and we're going to i like to just cut the flap off off first as i will be using this again stamping sentiments on there or using this as part of collages so it is beautiful little brown or craft paper that can be used so i'm going to slice this off and then i'm going to use a circle punch to punch a little notch in there. Now, fold it over in the middle just to get the center point of this. That will be punched out so it won't bother you. And then we need to just take a bit like that and punch it. I've done some off camera, so I want to show you a little trick with these ones. If you're scared, you're not going to get it in exactly the same point, which is easily done and you can't put all these envelopes in at the same time it will be too thick for the punch to handle so you can take one of those and just line it up turn your punch over so that you can see that little notch line it up and Bob's my uncle all of them are then perfect 
without any hassle or any stress. So that's just an easy little tip. So let's get started. I just want to close this and put it to one side. Now we need to get a strip of cardstock that we can use. Now what we need is to have double the length. So two times the length plus a little bit for the flap. So we still have this <laughs> ugly piece of scrapbook paper that I had used previously, really dirty on the back. Repurpose that. You can use some of those scrapbook papers that you don't really want to use. So you can do that. Just measure it, flip it over. I'm going to use just one that is easier to control. Other words, let's make a mark so that you can see. You don't have to have sophisticated tools to do this a little bit. And then I'm just going to add, just move that out of the way, line it up. And I'm going to just draw a line across. Now you can cut this with your craft knife. So let's do that. I'm going to just line it up. It's in frame so you can see. And we need the width of this. So it is just three quarter. I'm going to do it up to here. I've got it on 25 centimeters. That is here 34. So I'm going to just slice it straight down. 33, I mean to say, sorry, 33 straight down to there, and we will have that tiny little bit of space. So I'm going to go ahead. Today I want to try and do this one without my paper trimmer at all. And we already showed where we want that tiny little bit in. We don't need that much, otherwise we have to trim it off again. So I'm going to cut it down this way and then across. Just make sure that you line it up straight. That way you've got the guideline and you can see that it is the same way lined up so that it's not skew and you can just slice from where you had done the previous one now easy enough we're going to then fold this in just a tiny little bit higher than that about two millimeters or so or one sixteenth of an inch Fold that over, and there we have our little pocket. Yes, this is not pretty. It's in fact really, really, really dirty and very ugly, but we're going to change the look of this altogether so it wouldn't matter. I would just take a little bit of this and about there and just decorate the inside as well. And very, very easily can be done with a stencil. Let me just see what I have here next to me. This is again a last minute decision to use stencils on the inside wasn't planned you know me by now I never plan anything ahead of time very impulsive with my crafting I like this and of course I will be using some antique linen first of all and a plastic cover just for my sheet I was stamping on that side so I'll just do it this side just a little bit any type stencil can be polka dots really really anything just make sure you don't move your not that it really, really matters. Just a little bit of that. It literally hides the, can you see? And then I'm going to just, just for fun and games, going to move this a tiny bit. And I'm going to grab my ink blending tool. I just want to get that. No, I need to line it up this way. There we go. And I'm going to ever so lightly just darken some of it and we will see what pattern comes out of there there will still be some of the beige shining through and there we have it I'm going to do more or less the same thing this side <coughs> i beg your pardon frog in the throat do the same thing now i don't worry too much about the distress ink nor the distress oxides on my stencils it can easily be cleaned up and I don't mind if there is some discoloration happening when I next time use the same stencil. So let's move this one up a little bit again. Maybe change the, the angle of this and just very lightly run this ink blending tool over. And there we have it. Just almost looks like a, a giraffe sprint. That's that. Then on this side, we can do some ink blotches but today I would want to show you a paint splash technique as well <clears throat> so what we're going to do before we glue this down we're going to do the inking so I'm going to start with this 
I had here some I used the finger dauber before so I will continue with that just to get this dirt away hide the the print that's upside down the ruggedness of this piece of cardstock nobody would be none the wiser and he would also have a very unique and interesting background yes the text will still shine through and that's what we want that's why I use the distress oxide it is pigment based but we will add some browns to this as well so I'm going to close this one I love the richness of the the orangey tone some wild honey this is wild honey let me just oh dried marigold where's my wild honey there I want that one I will just use a little bit less of this seeing that I just discovered it's not the color I intended to use there we go <clears throat> a little bit of dried marigold and now onto wild honey and then we will take some rusty hinge as well wild honey is this yellowish color with with a bit of orange and if you add more to one spot it truly becomes more orangey and what I love about the distress inks is that or more specifically the oxide inks because it's pigment based it really covers beautifully it's got this chalky finish and to me that is absolutely amazing a little bit there there we go and now onto rusty hinge rusty hinge I just get my dome blender I want to bring in some vintage photo as well and remember whenever we have some ink on here I like to just smear it we've got this one from the library cards so I'm just going to clean this just so that the pigment ink is gone yes I could have thrown this away I love to use them over and over till they're really ragged and then I throw them away can you see there's just some colors in there back into the basket now on to vintage photo and I want the distress look as well so I'm going to use the daubers I haven't changed over in, onto the dome for all my distress oxides yet this is a bit of a darker brown color and we're going to fill in those other areas we don't always have to just use browns and pages for vintage we can spruce things up a little bit and use a bit of um, a different color there we go and a bit on the side as well And before we do the background stamping, we are going to do a bit of spray. Remember our water splashing or flicking technique? Today, however, I am going to spray the water on using my distress sprayer or <laughs> the bottle from Tim Holtz. So just spray it. If you do it lightly, there's small little, if you pull it closer, it's bigger puddles. If you trigger, use the trigger just a little bit, it's more dots. You can also go in and use the true flicking technique. And you will see the water will start reacting almost immediately. You can see that already in some places. You can dab it on. If that's more your thing, you want it more controlled. So you get the best of all worlds to know if you don't care you can simply flick it on drop some water in and flick it on and see where it leads you there we go I'll just grab a paper towel so that I can just dry this up real quick there we go you can dab the water off and we're going to dry this quickly
up. There we have it. So our fault line is still there. There's a spot of water. No, it's glue that was on there before. I thought, how is that possible? So there we have that one. We can just fold that over yet again. This one for the flap. And there we have that just to know where we need to fold it at a later stage. Now for some stamping. As always, you know, I would do vintage photo using that little splotch just for background again. Same stamp set, THMM, which is the mixed media sets. I want to take away too much of that flicking technique. Where is the big old one? Let me just get just want to move away the stencils. We want to use another one for this. Maybe that one still. There we go. These two stamp sets are so mixed up already. Because I use the stamp sets, I don't even know which stencil is going with it anymore. I keep my stencils to one side, my stamps to one side, embossing folders to one side, even if it sets, and my die cuts to one side if I might have something that goes with the set. All right, I love the look of this brown and orange. I want to use a piece of paper to actually stamp on here and put the stamp on. So let's see, should be this way. So I will be decorating this part. It can't be this, oh, it can actually. That will be perfect still. All right, let's get stamp block. And I'm going to use sheet of cardstock just to stamp on here. Ink up the stamp. Vintage photo, distress ink, and I'm going to stamp there. Let me just get a bit of a discoloration going here. I don't want the stark white for the background. That is just too bright. I don't want it even, so I'm not even adding more into my ink blending tool. Just a big enough area for the stamp. I think that will do. That's perfect. And hold it for a moment so that there's a good impression. And there we have that little bit in the middle that didn't stamp so well. Happens sometimes, but it is what it is, right? Let's fuzzy cut this quickly. Remember with fuzzy cutting, we move the paper, cardstock, whatever medium you're cutting out from, and not your scissors. I sometimes tend to just cut straight down with that and then come back and trim off the little ends. You can first cut it smaller and then go ahead and fuzzy cut. It's up to you to find your groove and, and what is easiest for you. You can really finely cut this out or keep that little edge on your fuzzy cutting. No right or wrong. If it was very, very wide, I would not have liked it personally. There we go. So we have that one. Before we add this, I want to do a bit of stenciling. For that, I want a nut vintage photo. Just remember the direction of what is going to fold over. So this side will be up. So when we do the stenciling, just bear that in mind. If you want just one specific number, you can add something underneath, just to, or on top if you have to, and just work on that. If you sketch, you will stencil in something else 
you can use the finger daubers which give you a little bit more control this should be fine let's look at that you can see the numbers on top there but it's really not bothering me at all and this one then that way Doing this lengthwise, again having that piece of cardstock in just to stop any ink from going onto my project and possibly ruining that. There we have that. Just some numbers, a little bit of interest, and you can see it's upside down like this, but when we fold it over, it will be upright like it should be. That one, however, is folding over, but we can put a label or something there. Let's add a label or two from our trusty little label stash. Either Tracy Fox from Love Junk Journals, or it can be, I love this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to put that up there, or maybe even there. Just have that. There we go. Onto that one, and then I can do the the image on top. Just some glue stick. Just a little bit over that. Now I didn't ink the edges this time. And then if we add this one, we can add it there. That is absolutely beautiful. Now let's see if we can find maybe a little brown one. Just a little bit more of a vintage look. And I just folded it over, but it doesn't matter. Just not so stark white. Once it's glued down, you will not see, look, the ink on my fingers. That doesn't bother me at all. It means you'll have fun if you have stained fingers, which is what crafting is all about, is to have fun. Now, remember we had this image <laughs> that didn't stamp so perfect. You can redo it if you want to. Not stamp over this, it's too risky. You can have a double image. If you had used something like a Misty or some sort of a stamping tool, it would have been perfect. And there we have it. Let's just burnish it a little bit. And then also the labels. That way we know it will stick down very, very well. I'm going to just add, maybe we can find a tiny little label can work. Do I have something here? I don't want to go rummage now. In my containers for something really, really small. I like this one. Maybe I can add that on top there and just kind of hide that bubble of mine where I did not stamp it. Lesson to be learned. Always make sure you actually, and now I burnish it with my nail, you make good contact with the whole surface where you want to ink or stamp. There we go. So this decoration is done. I just want to go ahead and, of course, distress the ink, the edges. A vintage photo. First the inside. And then we do the outside. might see the edges so I'm going to once I'm done inking the edges I'm just going to just ink a little bit on the inside even if just with vintage folder you can see the flat ink blending tools definitely leaves uneven marks the domed ones don't do it as much don't be fooled and think you can't have the image you actually still do but it's less less noticeable depends on how much ink you put down if you start softly and I should have used this let me show you with this last little bit here if I tap and start working there and I bring the ink over it's a softer look you can see there opposed to that but it doesn't bother me honestly not as this will be hidden anyway let's go ahead and glue this down I want to show you how we do this Ink the notches, both sides, 
just for that added little bit of interest. Can I do the other side now? Nope, did not. And just keep the ink open. one the front not the other side of it you can do the sides too if you want I'm not going to do it with this little one and that side there we go so that was done now we're going to glue this all together you can keep them all in the same direction what we're going to do is put glue down the the middle of this and then we will glue it together so one just a strip of glue you can use liquid glue i just want to keep the same together there we go liquid glue gives you that little bit of maneuverability can line it up still if need be told you this glue stick is a bit funky absolutely funky i don't know why at times it just gives me these pieces of glue stick that comes off this is lined up nicely all good to go so now place it in there And there we go. That will glue itself down and then on the other side. You can run your bone folder across where we had the glue in the middle just to burnish it a little bit. And there we have it. Once you open up, there is your little accordion folder. If you want to, you can round the corners and just, maybe we should do that. I like the look of it anyway. We'll just ink that again. Did I even ink the outside? I don't think so. I never inked the outside. I was like, why is this so light? So let's do that quickly. I went ahead to ink the inside, but I never inked the outside. Now this might be a bit tricky, but we can lift that luckily. The side. Can you imagine I never inked the outside of this? It's like, why is it so light? And then I realized, but hmm, I never inked that. So just that fold or that crease there. And the same with this one. this glue stick this very temperamental glue stick of mine so i'm going to grab a velcro dot so that we can close it with a velcro dot i normally just cut a strip of velcro dot for myself just more manageable than to battle with the two big rolls just attach it with you know to each other it's self-adhesive so it's very easy to just peel it off then and put both of them on at the same time now this is really really very sticky so just more or less in the middle again remember we have the the middle of that so we more or less know where to put this so i'm going to add that there and the minute that we close it we have our little accordion folder closed up nicely and you can open it up and you can add ephemera to this i'm going to just grab one of our little index cards you can fit anything in there obviously that will fit into this but there we have it i think this one came out too stinking cute 
love the colors the bit of orange but of four colors go somewhere on its way here by us and when we open it up so let's make a bigger one just so that you can get the hang of it this time let's use these envelopes i want to show you i'm going to just use three of them i'm going to just glue them down and because this pocket will just be too small you can if you want to cut the flap off then it will basically be like that and you can it's not an issue you can trim that side off if you want to but i will just close it and then trim that off so on this edge really on the edge let's just fold this all open so that it's easier just add some glue and close it up just make sure you don't put too much so that you stick it down on this area here you don't want the glue there now you can again take your trusty craft knife with a metal ruler not plastic not wood because in time you would slice away from it just make sure you line it up straight on your grid lines i just move the envelopes down one is still out of there we go hold it nicely and you can slice it down however much you want i'm not going to do that too much and just slice that part down you might have to slice another time to get through all the layers there we go so now we have the envelope pocket and it's open like that and i did put glue some glue there that was i think the first one you can check if you open up quickly shouldn't be shut and still open there we go so now we're going to just punch a notch in there so that we can start with the next one this time around i'm going to use a one and a three quarter inch circle punch again I'm just going to get the middle line of this I'm going to do two at a time let's see if that will work and then use the third one just to punch that now this one shows you the middle i think with the ek part there let's just see one and three quarters it's almost almost sure I'm going to just use my pencil and just get the middle line, which I think is there. This one doesn't have notches like my other one. So the best part is this. We can just eyeball it and I will show you how I mark it. This is now with a pencil. So for next time, I know where's the middle. And then this would be more or less the middle of this. You can use your ruler to just line it up and then extend it to that side and if the pencil come off on your projects you can still just erase it there we have it and this one looks a bit skew though so let's do it that way there we go let's try two if it works perfect if it doesn't then so be it i don't want a very deep notch and that was kind of hard the poor punch sorry punch use the other line it up just so that you can see where to punch this and that way you have your project perfectly well this one won't be so thick because it's only two layers and there we have it now we need to adjust our cover according to our envelopes again the same thing you need to have this width but twice and about one and a half inch for the flap the flap is just there to keep your stuff from falling out so let's turn this over and i'm going to ink it before i forget again straight away just a bit of inking there both sides of this what done what's done is done and then we can decide what paper do we want to use you can use cardstock a little bit more sturdy not too thick because remember you want to include it in your journal however if you're going to use this separately you would want to have something a little bit more sturdy and for that you're going to use a bit of thicker cardstock so if you want to use this to keep your ephemera in for yourself you can then obviously use thicker cardstock let me just close this glue stick 
before it dries out and it's already as funky as anything. Previously we had made our own faux venom by stamping on the deli paper. I want to use that and incorporate it and use this for the cover. Now what do we need to do? We have to now glue this down and yes it's going to be stark white and it's fine. If we use something like a yellow cardstock that could also work. I have a piece here that we can maybe use. I just want to show you the effect and maybe you know what I think I like the yellow better than the white. I really really like the yellow better than the white. So I'm going to swap this out yellow for white. I don't want to use too much of the deli paper so I'm going to just measure quickly. You can see this is also a bit used already. Sometimes the ink goes everywhere. We have to, I don't think this will, I'm going to just make a, a mark so that I can see if I flip it over. The flap is not very big. So what I'll rather do is do it this way. Same thing, we're just going to measure the length of this and it needs to be twice the height of this. So for us not to miss where it needs to be, going to do that there. And then I simply just use my ruler, line it up. And I want a bit bigger than that. So I'm just going to move it slightly back. So I'm going to just draw a line there. And then I can measure this height for you that I prefer. That's just over one and a half inches. So for this one, line it up, maybe a little bit wider. That way you know that if something goes wrong, you can actually trim it off and just get it a bit more in line. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Just be careful, always cut against your ruler um, so that if your craft knife slips, that you should be safe. Um, if you cut towards yourself, it might be a bit risky. Accidents can happen so, so fast. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and just cut this down to where we already got it. Never throw away the extra cardstock that can always be used for another craft project such as making tags or labels. I'm going to just add glue. And this glue stick is really funky. I want glue everywhere. So I'm going to add this generously on here, making sure I've got the edges. We will clean the, the cutting mat just after this while it settles and dry. Remember, deli paper can tear easily. We really need glue everywhere. We can't have any of this not gluing down properly. If you need to, just put in both directions. There we go. And it's sticking to my finger. Now, I'm going to try and line this up as best I can. Even if there's a little bit over, it doesn't matter. Rather a little bit over than too little try to avoid wrinkles. So I use my hand to smooth it out. You're not going to get it wrinkle free, but try as much as you possibly can. Here I've got wrinkles, just lightly smoothing it out. This side, there's more. I can still pull it. That's why I don't use liquid glue. Liquid glue would make the deli paper just too soft and the lines would show through. And there we have it. I'm going to look this up. And just for a moment, set this aside so it can dry. A trusty baby wipe is all that is needed to just wipe away all the ink, all the glue that's on here. And it really dries very easily as well. And also just a bit clean the hands sort of, more or less, not completely, just more or less. Now this will take a minute or so to dry, just going to, and there we have it. 
this should be, you can still feel it's a bit flimsy. I want to just grab my gift card. What is this access card? Not a gift card. Just make sure it, and then I've torn it. That's now exactly what I didn't want to happen. And okay, we will have to camouflage that. And that's the reason why we wait for the glue to, to dry. But there wasn't a bubble where it didn't glue. So we will have to put a label on there. If we're lucky, it might be on the fold. See, accidents happen so, so, so quickly. I'm going to trim the edge. And I'll start this side. Don't cut your cardstock now. Only the paper. The daily paper. This is very, very flimsy. Which is why I used the lighter cardstock. First time we're using our faux vellum. First time. And that bit of glue is really now sticking to my finger. It's best to keep this done. So next time I remember, hopefully remember, to first do this before I cut down the envelopes and so forth. A piece of paper for next time. And there we have this. So now... Just to get this, see it's a little bit bigger and that's perfect. I'm going to just take my bone folder so that we can quickly score this. Just a tiny little bit. Remember this is a metal tip, so it is easy to tear the paper. You can use the other side just to make that crease, which is probably a safer option. Going to fold this over. And I need to just see where is that little bubble that I made. Can you see that I didn't score this properly? It's on the back side. There it is. And it's really sticky, sticky, sticky. This one. Let's score this one. Just a little bit further away from the, from the actual pocket itself. That way we can have it safely and there I've torn that one as well. Just rather press down while this is still drying. Now this is a little bit wider. Which side do I want? So now we have a spot on the front that is torn. I can't see it now but I did feel it. It's so difficult to see now. There, right at the end. It will not be noticeable. But this one at the back is going to bother me. I want to just get this. I will just do it like that. Just a tiny little bit. Now, slowly. So that it doesn't tear. Of course, we already, well, not we, I did already damage the other part. And... We'll have to wait for this to dry properly before I can ink it up or any of that. There's some glue on the inside. That was when I glued the, the paper on. I'm going to go ahead and just glue these envelopes together. Again, just start by adding glue in the middle. You can go a little bit wider with this one. Maybe as wide as the notch because it is a wider envelope. Line it up nicely so that it can glue down properly. And there is my doorbell. I'll be back. Sorry for that little interruption or abrupt stop in the video. So we've glued this down now, just making sure that this is burnished well, just to make sure that it is gluing down properly. Put a bit of glue there. See, that's the beauty of glue stick. You can fix little bubbles like that. If you use a much stronger glue, I had to use Eileen's. I would not have been able to open this up by now. So there we have it. Our little accordion with three envelopes this time. By now this should be dry. 
I can still feel the glue is damp because it's such flimsy paper. I'm going to go ahead and just ink this up. Again, vintage photo before we glue this in to give it a little bit more time to dry. I'm going to risk this and punch that. So there we have it. I love the rounded corners. It just gives a different look altogether. We will do something there. We can easily hide it with a label or some die cut, something. More stamping, because once it's dry and it's not sticky, it will be okay. We'll do the inside, starting with the outside, because I tend to forget once I am busy on the inside. Then, I think I want to add, see that's just me. Last minute I decide I want to add paper to this side. Where is a piece of plastic? Something, something. I know some people are using book pages to glue down. I don't because I use book pages so often in my vintage crafting. I just don't see myself wasting the book pages like that. Folded over or paper that they don't like. Print with paper. I can't do that. So I'm going to use I need this side. So I'm going to take this away. Making sure there's no glue there. And I'm going to... Which side do I want now? I'm going to do this. But now we need to be careful. Because I need to cut it down. Again, very carefully. Lay it flat. Just try to smooth out wrinkles. And I'll put a bit of glue there. So let me just get an eraser real quick. I use a normal eraser for pencils to get rid of extra glue while it's still wet. And there's now a piece going that way. There we have it. So I'm just going to trim this off. And then the edges. I'll do the final cutting now. You can see there's little bits extra, so we will just trim that off. If it was completely dry, you could have used something like an embryo board and just basically found off that part. But because it's still not settled and dry after gluing the inside, that will be a disaster waiting to happen. And you don't want to ruin a part that you can't fix. So this will just have to dry. I'm going to continue with the inking on the inside. Let's open that up. And then we have to think up a plan to just try and hide the area that is damaged on the outer flap and on the back of this. I'm thinking extra stamping can't fold that over because it will definitely glue down if I fold it over. I'll just ink the inside, continue with the inking of the inside. That brown marks we won't see because the envelope will be there and the yellow is not so so stark white as if we had used the white. That would have been just too bright. If you don't mind the white, go ahead, use white cardstock. But I prefer something different. Beige would have been perfect, and this would have taken on that. Now, this is almost dry. See, those parts are sticky. Hmm. And then this little bubuki here. I love the paper. The daily paper, it gives a different feel. There, where it's almost dry, it really, truly is a different feel. Just that part there. Let's see. That is fine. Now, just to ink that edge. There we have it. Righto. Let's glue our envelopes in and we can then see how to camouflage that little part that. There we have it. 
little bit in the center. Grab your glue stick. I want to just turn it over this way. And again, don't put any glue on that part. So if you want to have an easy way to fix that, and don't worry about glue that will close down. Put a little cardstock or paper plastic in there. Make sure it's lined up. See, the glue is on there now instead of on our... I'm going to punch that one out as well. I would like to do that. Just to have a different one from the others. This yellow, I want to just punch that out. Line it up and punch that out. There we have it. Lovely. I like that. That can just dry. So now it looks like that. Ink that one. And just make sure there's no glue on any one of that. Same thing. You want to make sure that you don't have glue on your envelope. That can close it. There we have it. Pull that one out and Bob's my uncle. This is turning into a long video. I hope you people don't mind. It was supposed to be a very short one. Now let's quickly camouflage my boo-boos. That can work. We can do the Velcro dots or we can add a closure. And I think that is what we will have to do for today is to add a little closure just to be different. We want, you can simply just tie a string around it, lace. I'm wondering, do I want that? We already have a closure. With Velcro, let's do string. Let's just do string. Oh, this is unraveling from the, from the roll. Let me just get this tidied up a bit. Let's do it twice around. So hold it there and another part, maybe so, and we can tie it up. There we have it. That can work. You don't really even see that. Let's do a bit of stamping. I always get the stamp upside down, like always. Of course, the script type is not really clear. I think it's this way. Just a bit. You won't even see the the difference. If you feel and put there, and I think that's it. Don't think we have to bother too much. Again, just to show you if you need to make your own paper for your own ephemera folder, what you can do is you can use a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be double-sided. You can use double-sided if you want to. This is one of those that we previously used. You can fold it in half, cut it according to your own size. I will show you. One of those index cards that we used the other day, the one that I just used to ink on, if you fold that in half lengthwise, I mean, <laughs> sorry, not lengthwise, horizontally in half, and you glue down the inside, and do the little notch, you can use that. You can use paper. If you have something a little bit more flimsy, I have some vintage paper here somewhere. Where did I put it now? I think it's this one. If you use something like this, that is really, truly very flimsy, you can glue the two sheets together and then fold it over and just maybe trim off that, that top part where the staples used to be in. Um, then you can fold it this way 
I will include this in the journal at one point when we get to making our signatures. So it doesn't matter if I fold it in half. So you can do it that way. You can repurpose old envelopes. You can make your own paper. You can use commercially bought envelopes. If you have like little pieces of cardstock, this is like a very red, red brick color. You can score it in half because this is a little bit more sturdy. So if you want to make a standalone, you can just fold it in half and you can make your own. I wouldn't then make it too thick. I will punch in first before I glue it down. It will be a little bit too difficult. So punch that side. Let's do this one to show you. If we do half, I'm just going to eyeball it. It's really thick. You can see how it's flying. If we then bring this over, we can just turn over our punch and we can line it up. You can see it's really, really hard. It would never go through if you have to do both layers. Just burnish it well and then you can make your own pockets. This can also be a beautiful tuck spot, which is leading us into our tuck spots. Tuck spots is an area in your journal that you can use to put stuff in. Now, this one, I'm going to glue down straight away as a tuck spot. And I will be just putting something on it, like a mushroom and label to decorate it. So this can be one way of making a quick tuck spot. And I'm using liquid glue here. In fact, I am using Distress Collage Medium simply because it was right next to me. No other reason I could have just reached over and get the, the Eileen's as well. Make sure that there's nothing running out. You don't want it spoiled. If you are busy and in a hurry and you want to do other things, remember you always have the option of putting clips on it and putting it to one side so that it does free your hands. You can even use close backs or clothespins, anything of that sort. I'll move this one up and put that there just to hold it down, just so that you know that's another option. Sometimes glue takes a little bit longer. This, however, the collage medium doesn't, but I just want to show you. If you want to go on with something, leave it to one side and you can work on something else. We can also use envelopes. Um, I want to show you this has got the glue on where we have glued down our envelopes into our little ephemera holders. If you have something like this and you have stenciled on the front, let's do that quickly. Quick, 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 quick stencil. Not too much. I'm using something that is not even part of our theme. I'll turn this over. There's glue on that side. Distress. Wait, don't move now. Don't move now because I didn't hold it. And it is on the cellophane. Just want to show you how quick and easy it is to make tuck spots. There's one, and it is a card that would have been thrown away because it had the glue on the back. Now, once that is dry, let me just show you, with the eraser, you can get that sticky glue off before it is completely dry. There it is, you can't even see it anymore. And I can now put it down and pick it up. It's, it's not gluing down. So that really, really helps. So this is a little tuck spot. What will we do with this now? If this was our page, we can now glue it down on three sides and it will be a pocket where we can add something. Now, I don't have a tiny little label with me, but let's just grab something from here, which was stamped on, on cardstock. So it's really, really quite um, sturdy, but that can go in there. You can go ahead and you can round the edges if you so wish. Same as a belly band that is then attached to the middle top and bottom or to the left and the right side, you can then put stuff in the middle. This, however, can be an extension of the page. You can glue it down top and bottom and on the side and then just put the things in there. Um, let me just grab something that is unfinished just so that you can see the contrast better. So you can fit it in there on your page. So there's very many different ways of doing this. You can use scraps and bits of paper. I take this one. Yes, it is an ugly part. We can... Um, do the corners. I just want to show you this. A different way of just decorating that. Getting rid of some of that ugliness. You can do a label on top here. I'm not going to glue it down because I would first want to get this sorted. Remember I told you this was really, and you can see it for yourself, very ugly. But you can glue something down there. Let's do that. Really not an issue. Still vintage, not mushroom theme, but still vintage. Glue that down. You hide that ugliness, it's ready, 
we can ink the edges and you can add it to your journal. Junk journaling is anything that would have been thrown away, which this piece of paper is a perfect example of it. This was your page. Oh, this one just, just fits in, but this would have been a perfect tuck spot. You can, and this is the beauty of it, make it a flip out where you, and sorry for this part where I've written and it's really, really ugly. You can attach it with another strip of paper. You can attach it with washi tape. You can make your own washi tape where you use normal cello tape and alcohol inks, and you can just put it down on something like wax paper or sticker paper where you can pull it off the backing part of it and just color it yourself. I have a piece, um, a roll. This is Micropore. Um, it is tearing a bit, um, but you can add this, open it up because it's very flexible. You can add this to then stick your tuck spot down. Tuck spot can be the corner of envelopes. Let me just grab one here. I'll take one of those little coin envelopes that we used earlier. So there are really many different ways that you can do tuck spot. Tuck spot can be, I'll just cut this one down just roughly. And this is truly skew. I can see it with my, with my eye how skew this is. I'm sorry, that will bother me completely. Let me just put it on the line and just trim it. There we go, that's a bit better. That can be a tuck spot. You can glue this down onto your sheet and it can be a double pocket. You can put something at the back if you glue it down on three sides. You can have something there, something in there, or if you do it on two sides, this side. You can maybe do a bitty there just to hold it and then you can have a side pocket. I will do something on the inside with this, so let me show you what I mean with that. I'm going to just take my, where did I put it there? My craft knife and I'm going to put it in just a little bit, just be careful. Not to cut yourself, I normally just poke a little hole in so that I can get the, the edge of that in there and just work myself in there very, very slowly, very carefully. There we go. Just be careful not to slice right through, like I almost did there. Now, I will show you. I've got that little area open, but they're closed. So I'll change this into something so this is not a waste. I'm going to glue this down on three sides. Not complete three sides. This side, the bottom, and that tiny little bit there just to hold it in place. Normally you would decorate first, but the decorating part is now not the main focus of this exercise. So again, just wipe down extra glue. Luckily this dries beautifully. The collage medium, distress collage medium. Now I'm going to grab our container just to get some tags that we can add here quickly. Um, I'll just grab a few that we had previously done just to, to illustrate. I grabbed it from the loaded pocket. So what we can do is we can have one in there at the back. This is not right yet, this is not right yet. I must be so careful. So there can be one. Then we can maybe have a shorter one in front like that. And then on the side, we can have even another little tag or a, I will grab the labels that we made earlier, the tickets, and that can then go in there. Now, because I sliced it so wonky, it is a bit rugged and the other one is in there. There we go. So, and then you can decorate it, obviously, before you put the labels in. I hope that is making sense. So a tuck spot, literally just something where you are having a space to tuck things away. I hope this makes sense and that you would give it a try to make some of your own tuck spots. Another one could be to slice an envelope on opposite sides, on opposite sides. I just want to make sure there's no glue on this one. 
and I will turn this into something still usable for our journal and this one seeing that I used a label for that tuck spots could be anything like I said that will be perfect if we just ink the edges and let's just decorate or just ink the edges so that it is well and I'm going to put this in the container because we can really truly use this grabbing a mushroom so that we can just glue that on there what would fit what would fit let's see quickly something something it will be something that we can use that is sized well let's look at color as well i like that one so let's stick with that and there we have a little tuck spot and you can add that wherever you want this one is you can even do it this way if your orientation is like that so i'm going to do this and then just a little bit of stamping and i think i will do ground espresso just to make sure it stands out that stand because it's on there just some dimension maybe just wipe that ink off before i mess up something else and on here where it is so stark white we will add that and there we have it little decoration maybe a little label i am trying to take something with my left hand and you all know i'm not a lefty by now i'm always amazed with the people that are left-handed and i'm going to put that up there and there we have it a little tuck spot decorated and done ready to be added to our album or our journal just showing you with the bags pins call it what you want clips it really is very easy to get this sorted so this would be a free tuck spot meaning it's not glued down you can glue it down on three sides in other words on three you can do it on two sides still have that still add something in the middle let's decorate this a tiny little bit i want vintage photo specimen and i'm going to just use some of those other stamps from the specimen range let's do this one And I want to show you some paint splatters as well so you can see and it will be good on this red brick because it will really stand out quite a bit and I think I'm going to go ahead and do that straight away before we decorate too much this just needs to dry ground espresso vintage photo this side this is dry it shouldn't react with the paint and then we can just add something else so for the paint paint splatters, I have got some gesso, white acrylic paint. You can use white acrylic paint with some added water. You can hear it's really very liquidy. I call it my paint splash so that I know what it is. So just a little container. There used to be some texture paste in here. I'm using <laughs> some cellophane packaging material that I had stuck together with some sticky tape. All toothbrush that I'm dipping in there. Now you can. Look, there's already powder of the sides where I open up. You can just basically flick it, bigger splotches. You can use your thumb and flick it all over. And I want to add this before I actually add any other contrast. And there we have it, nothing to it. I'll just take this away and just show you. We just dip it in and all we do is we just flick it like this. Or you can simply shake it for bigger splotches. That's it, nothing to it. Really not a very difficult technique but it actually really 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 gives a very nice effect i know i don't even wash this out it can simply just stay there for a little bit just want to get the paint off here so that i don't mess up anything else and that's dry pieces so that will just wipe away now i need to just go dry this so that these blotches of paint can dry and i'll be back within a minute or so. 
so the paint splotches or splashes out dry just gives a little bit of a different look if you do this on an inked image where say for instance i added on top of this stenciled image which was done with distress ink it will turn brown depending on the color ink that you use remember distress inks both oxide and the normal distress ink are reactive to water so the minute that you put something like watered down paint on top of it it will react with the ink this was cardstock that was um not painted or inked or anything so it does not react with that it is white so there we have it i just want to put something on top here i think this one will be beautiful just a little bit more stamping um uh, what happened ever happened to our toxic stamp must be here somewhere but there we go and the ink and i want to get vintage photo i think now we want to add that there so I'm going to add that, I think, there, maybe there, in the middle. All right. That there, and I want something else. Also, that little stamp, and maybe the field note as well, so I'm not going to close the ink. I'll put that one to that side, making sure that it is stamping well. And then field note, or field label rather than field note, sorry. Where do I want that one? Let's do this at the bottom and then I'll cover that one. Let's see where we're going to put this, then I can have a better idea. Let's do it there. As a background to this, there we go. So now I'm going to add a little mushroom that is perfect for this picking up the red brick. And there we have it, the little tuck spots just to give you ideas. I'll just close this up. All the inks and all the clues out of the way and then we can have a look at what we have made today so we've done our two ephemera holders one with velcro one with some string a little tuck spot another one that can be glued in one that I showed you that can flip over depending on the size of your page. I will still turn this into something useful. Maybe add some paper there, make it a tiny little folio or something. So this I will do off camera and I will show you next time you will recognize it. For our next session, we will be making some bits and bobs. I want to show you that and then the session after that, we will do our binding, getting our signatures together and after that, we'll make the cover and the cover topper, and then we will put it all together. So please start gathering your, your paper. That can be doily, some newspaper that you just paint coffee on. If you like the coffee stained effect, otherwise you can use double-sided scribble paper or one-sided, and we can stencil on the other side. Get a variety of sizes of, of paper, because if they're a bit bigger, we can use the sides, bottoms, or the tops as tuck spots. We will fold that in used envelopes that we can then repurpose, um, old magazine pages, coloring sheets, old work sheets of children, their books, um, magazines, catalogs, bank statements. If you use something like a bank statement, don't fret, I'll show you. You can also use, don't use acrylic paint that will not really help to, to camouflage your personal detail and stuff like that. I'm not interested in your financials. You can put some gesso over that. Um, you can firstly put it on very thinly, let it dry, and then do a second layer. Or you can do it from the start very thickly and 
it will then camouflage all of that. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Thank you for joining me. If you want to try this for yourself, please tag Wawa Crafting on social media. If you want to see more content like this, give me a thumbs up, please. And as always, I'll be appreciating it if you subscribe to the to my channel as well. If you haven't done so, please keep, click on that little bell. You will get notifications of new content every time I upload. See you back soon. Bye-bye.